hello and welcome to uh, the May edition of the first in the month. I'm uh, Mick Fortune. And I'm Robbie Sill. Right, and uh, we're uh, thanks for joining us again. Listen, uh, we're going to spend uh, this episode talking about May folklore and May customs. Um, I suppose it's one of the most important times of the year for me, anyway. It's, uh, it's one of the there's, there's so much folklore and custom in, in, in Wexford and probably in, in the rest of the country as well associated with the month of May. Um, so it's going to be a jam packed program. We'll probably go over time. So it's the second one after Samhain, which is the Celtic New Year. May is half half the year round. It's it's uh, so it's after Samhain, which is Halloween. The major one, Bialtana, May is the uh, number two of all the Celtic festivals. It's the second in importance. And they're directly opposite each other. If you look at the kind of almost like a circle, one is six months, they're directly the, the opposite half. So in, in when sound and Halloween, you're going into the dark of the year. Well, this time of the year, you're going into the light and you're going into the growth and you're going into the... Uh, I suppose you're, this is the important time of the year because your crops, every, everything is grown and you need, uh, I suppose, to look at the weather. You need look in general to uh, for things to happen so you can... Store for the winter. Literally, it's the beginning of summer because it's it's uh, directly between the spring equinox, the vernal equinox, and the uh, summer solstice, right smack in the middle. And uh, we were talking about boolean starting in March years ago. A lot of people used to start their boolean in May because May was the beginning of the the milking uh, time. That's when the milking would start. And uh, and since Irish society, generally speaking, up until recently was very cow based and milk based most of the uh, things any, anybody ate was dairy produce white meats they called it as well so and uh, we still have a very strong dairy based diet in Ireland unlike places like China where they don't drink any milk or dairy based product products but uh, that's changing now what's the with this, it new, is, this new deal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. things are changing all right but. actually one of the things I grew up with, with my mother actually was that because um, do do with milk we, we, I suppose we start really with May Eve and May Day like in May, May Day, Mammy and them used to go to the local farmers. Would wouldn't have cows themselves where they were where they, where they were reared, so they would go to the local farmers to get a little old sweet can of milk or a little pint of milk, whatever they be getting. But no one would give you anything on May Day. You would not give away your luck on May Day. You wouldn't give away anything on May not Day for love nor money. No. But if you were given it in any other time in May or any other time, if you were given milk away, it had to be a bit of salt in it, and the same with butter, because uh, you you wouldn't give it for free either. So that was, uh, there wasn't a badness, just the salt was for, just in case any luck was taken with the butter or the milk that you were giving away. A bit of protection in the salt, was and it? And you will, uh, protection for your luck yeah. rather than for the person you're yeah. giving to. Yeah. But equally, as you 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 know well about the, the poor people who came looking for any milk or butter, and if they didn't get any, uh, there'd be bad luck as a result of that. But I don't think they'd be looking for it on May Day. Yeah. On May mornings years ago, people wouldn't, if people were, say, years ago in the country, you know, the neighbours come around to <coughs> get a pint or two pints of milk, you know, just any can. And uh, that you're not supposed to sell any milk or of a May morning. That's There's some lucky. Yeah. That your cows yeah. won't profit for the year and things like that. The farmers were told never to give away milk on the 1st of May. Or to have, uh, it's a bad look or to be giving away milk or something for the rest of the year. I think we heard. If you give it away on the 1st of May, you'd be giving it away for the rest of that year. And you'd have bad luck or something like that. No farmer would give you milk because his milk would go to, his quantity of milk would go down if he gave away the milk on the 1st of May to anybody. Not even to a neighbour would he give it. The same with potatoes. I know that now from my own experience that I sold to a cartload of potatoes to a farmer in May and my crop was just marvellous. Yeah, no, you give, you'd give away nothing. Even to this day, I don't, like, even though this podcast is going out on May Day, May Day I <laughs> for feel free. Bad, for free. Yeah, I feel bad about it. You know, I, I'm giving you anything at all. Uh, so basically, the, the story was that we were told if you give away anything on May Day, you'll give, be giving away your luck for the year. And really, the year started now. This was the new year, really. But forget your 1st of January. This was the new year. This was the, this was the important time. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start. I'm going to show. There's a little recording I've got with some women from Wexford, and they go through loads of good looking, bad looking stuff throughout the month of May. Oh, it would have been recorded about 2005 and 2006, Jeez. and it'll get us into the mood of uh, good, good looking, bad looking the month of May. So, very good. Right, so let's start that. You couldn't white wash in May, I couldn't, stay, I couldn't stay on the wall. So you have to white wash then in either April or June or July, whatever month you want to white wash. But uh, if you white washed in May, uh, the hens wouldn't lay if it was a hen house. And if they didn't lay it, to be all rotten. 
you'd never get to, you used to sit the hens that time. So there'd be no use to sit in the hens. The eggs because they'd be all rotten. And uh, if you don't know what the cow house, the, uh, the, the cows that have fairy calves, and uh, you couldn't do it there house. And if you don't know what a horse, the horse would die of your plowing or heron or out in the field walking on them. So you couldn't think of doing it. No. You, you could walk away. April, this is the best month. Always on the May mornings, 1st of May, everyone out around the mountainside did, always got up really early and went out and wished everybody good luck. Whether there was anybody around them or not, they always wished the neighbours all around good luck. But if you went that morning, then you always went to any farmers or anybody that had cows or any kind of stock or anything, and you wished them all good luck. But if there was a churn there, you had to catch it and give it so many dashes of the dash or the turnover or whatever yeah. it was oh, yeah. uh, for to wish him good luck because if not you took the look of the butter with you. You, don't, you didn't churn on the 1st of May because the fairies would take the butter and the butter would never turn, never turn into butter. You could churn all day and couldn't turn into butter because it would be the 1st of May and you didn't churn on the 1st of May. If a neighbour called you'd have to give him a go of the churn because yeah. if not they could spirit away some of your, some some of your butter. butter. You know. So you'd, you'd give them a go ahead, the way yeah. that you'd, you'd kind of you neutralise them, yeah. 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 They said you wouldn't marry in May, you drew the day. That's all I do, I don't know, like, if there's any... But that was a saying, like, you married, if you got married, you would have no luck. Things wouldn't go right anyway. That said, you don't take the paintbrush in in your hand in May to do anything. Well, oh no, no you never whitewash in May. The you first of May, it, yeah. From the first of May to the first of June, you don't whitewash in May, you whitewash all your luck away. Mm. God, I don't know, I've seen people doing it. And then I've seen that, and they didn't I make any difference. Think of that, but I know a woman, and my God, and five years down the line, if something was to happen in that woman's house, huh, she couldn't have better luck. i seen her whitewashing in May. She'd go back. And she'd point back to that. Yeah, the, the that, 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 that. So she couldn't have it. I see how my was. And that would be her belief. And in May morning, the girls used to go out and they get the dew off the grass and they wash their face with it. And they, they'd have lovely complexion for the following year. They'd never, the whiter you were at that time, the better. Now you have to be all brown, but that time <laughs> you had to be lovely and white. But people collected the first drop of rain on the, the May the 1st. There was a cure in that, the first drop of rain. Did you ever hear that? Yeah. Yeah. We used to keep that in the bottle and there was a cure in it, yeah. So uh, you never get married in May, Robbie? No, but there's, there's other ones. You're not, uh, it's bad luck to move house in May as well. Actually, as well as that, uh, the churn, um, you're supposed to put a, a new whisk in the churn when you're churning milk in May. Most people don't have churns anymore, but that's what they, that's what they were supposed to do. Yeah. People were afraid of the fairies coming in and basically just taking their luck. Wasn't that the kind of general? They didn't, but no, just 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 remember, you don't buy anything new in May either. That was another thing you don't do. You don't buy anything new in May. No, nothing new in May, no. The bad luck. But the the uh, yeah, you're right. No, the 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 fairies might take the luck, but it wasn't just the fairies. The the luck might go from any any amount of things. There was a great balance between benign and malign. And it's, it really came down to the cows being the source of your prosperity, yeah. look, yeah. and everything going. And that was symbolised most of all in the, at the top of the churn, your, your buttermilk and your butter. And that's what the, uh, that's the stuff that everything for your winter foods would be made. The other stuff would be the ordinary milk that you'd, you'd consume fairly quickly. But the butter and the buttermilk could be used all year round. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, that was, if there was short supply of that, you were in a bad way. So... And and really the the uh, so it was down to look as you did that, yeah. but they so that they any any signs that there was a whole lot of superstition built up and about how you'd keep that and how you'd lose it, so uh, and it's symbolic as well because remember this is like at the top of the layer where it meets the air, but that was also symbolised with the May morning dew, yeah. so just where the top of the grass meets the air, and you have the whole we talk we talk about the skimming of the well yeah. later on just where the water meets the air. Yeah. It's that liminal thing in Celtic tradition. Mm -hmm. And we have as well, uh, what's very sacred, liminal space as well, is uh, on the, where three townlands meet, three counties meet even, yeah. even better, and our three baronies, and you've got where three rivers meet, well you said that, confluence of rivers, yeah. 
and uh, there that's a real central boundary point but you, you, also you've got thresholds yeah. uh, window sills windows yeah. And uh, that crops up in the May, the May, the May sprigs over the doors that's and right. the May flowers in the windows. And, yeah. and doors themselves, absolutely, yeah. and, and gates. So one way that they would do is that they, people were afraid that somebody would come along during the night yeah. and open their gates yeah. and open their doors because that had let out their look yeah. for the whole year. Even, I remember Granny saying one day, years ago, when they, when, they, when they churned, they'd always leave a little bit of the butter at the back of the door for the fairies. The first pat went for the fairies. And... I've come across in other counties, not as much in Wexford and Donegal, where they said that the fairies would be asleep until come May Eve and May Day, but then they'd wake up and then they'd go out and they'd just cause havoc. So you'd have to be ready for them, you know, they were going to cause you bother. On the 1st of May, yeah. of course, that was the, the grandest day. Um, my mother would get up real early and she told us to get up and wash our face in the dew, the morning dew. Of course, there's always dew on the grass on the 1st of May morning. And we'd wash our face. And then my mother would uh, taught us to make a little hole in the ground just with our hands. And she would kneel down and put her nose into the, to the uh, soil or into the ground. And she'd uh, sniff up the lovely energy from the ground. Three times she'd do that. So this year I was away on the 1st of May, I was away walking in County Offaly and my daughter was with me and a few other people and my daughter of course, all we always did the same growing up as my mother and my daughter and I said where are we going to go to get grass, we were in the little village in County Offaly called Kennedy and uh, anyhow we looked around any and we found a grand garden with grass in it and we went in the two of us and lay down washed her face in the grass and then we stuck her nose into the ground and the next thing we got up there were people around us looking at us to see what was going on and they didn't know what was wrong. Uh, the Mary, uh, people used to cut a branch of a, I think it was a hawthorn tree, yeah. tree mm -hmm. and stick it in the midden and tie ribbons to it or flowers and kind of to sing around uh -huh. it, you know. That was the day that, the, that, that was the, uh, day that the fairies resurfaced, you know, the hibernators from the end of October, beginning of November to May Day, like, um, they were back in business again and doing their stuff, you know, that kind of a way, like everybody was watching out for them. <laughs> that was more or less, so that was them out and about. Sniffing the ground on a May morning, that's what's a gorgeous one. It's like the, it's like walking in a May dew. The, the, the tradition we have is where you walk in a May dew on a May morning uh, for just for, for, for good luck. Or young girls will always talk about getting the May dew on your hands and uh, rubbing your face in it. Or that woman, that last woman from, from, from Wexford there, she passed away. She was on about the, keeping the May, the first drop of rain on a May, mor on a May day and you'd use that for a cure. Now that actually went to Newfoundland. And in Newfoundland, I have the tradition as friends of mine over there. They keep the last bit, they keep the snow from from May, and they keep that the, the water that in a bottle, and that's used for a cure. Um, yeah. See, but but it's, like that's interesting. She said the first drop of of the, the, the dew is the first drop of water in May. Yeah. But equally, the first drop of milk in May was deeply symbolic and important for luck as well. So that would be that's why if somebody was skimming your well at five o'clock in the morning or yeah. taking the doing whatever to your to your grass or yeah. really, that was because it was the first. That's why it was so important. But they had the uh, the butter, the first drop of butter that you got from the churning on May Day, even though you weren't supposed to churn on May Day. Yeah. Uh, accounts vary. But you got the first the first bit of butter you got on May Day that was uh, boiled over the fire and it was put in a little, it could have been a little bottle. Yeah. And that was used to cure any amount of things. The whole where year. did you get that, that from? Was it Wexford? Um, I think it's so I got that in the... Uh, I'm not sure where he got it now, but yeah. it does it does crop up in the schools yeah. collection in yeah. Kilran, I think, in, yeah. in Wexford. Yeah. But no, I have heard it elsewhere yeah. too. No, it, it's general yeah. enough. Funny, we'll get to Donegal people in a second, mm. but I'm just kind of thinking of the water thing. There's so much stuff because Robbie mentioned it there about the the skim in the well. Now, for those of you who don't know, there's a thing that I've come across constantly coming across it, and I come across it here, I come across it up the country as well, is that on a, mo a May morning you get up and you'll go out to your well. And you'll find a woman and she's uh, sometimes with her hands and sometimes with saucers. And she's going to repeat in these words. She's skimming the top of the well. Half for you, half for me. Half for you, half for me. Half for you. So that in that moment, that witch or that 
that person she's taken your look for the year um, sometimes I recorded an account up here in Ballandagan recently it was a, a one for me one for you one for me one for you mm. um, and that goes to, uh, so this was this kind of this, this was this kind of um, this kind of woman there was a man I recorded um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to stick on a half for you half for me story from Tipperary and then I'm going to follow it with, with a man that I recorded a man called Jim Dean up in Tinryland in, in County Carlow and he has a version of it where in that moment when you get up on May morning and you don't talk to anyone and you go down to a stream or a river with a knife or scissors and you cut it and in that moment of cutting you can make a wish to wish yourself your neighbours bad luck or to wish yourself good luck um, but if you wish yourself good luck there's usually a bit of a downfall it's a dark thing to, it's a dark place to go well I'll stick it on for you that's like when you went to visit the fairies it could be good in the short term but you never know what might happen you get entangled with like, absolutely but, uh, yeah be careful Chinese what you wish for is, yeah. be careful no, what you wish for and we won't forget Donegal yeah. well the first of May um, May Eve of course it's called um, then people would go to the well for water and um They'd be taking the water from the other person, neighbour maybe, or whoever it would be, and they'd um, say a half for you and half for me. <laughs> oh, it's given the, the wells, that's the usual thing. And uh, the first to, to the well would skim it. And what's the, what does the, what do they do with the, forget now. They take, they take, take some a bottle from the well. They take something anyway that the next lot of water or people that had come to the well, they wouldn't get pure water. Yes. They wouldn't get what they call well water, spring water. Mm. They'd have the good taken out of it. Uh, some of the owner people were, were terribly suspicious about the 1st of May and in this area um, way back I often heard my late father saying about older people on the 1st of May if you went to a stream and if you had a, a knife or a scissors and you had to do this before you spoke to anybody and what Juicy be said was all come header to me this fine May morning and you cut the running water with a, with a knife or a scissors. Now, there was a lot of, of bad luck attached to it as well because people could wish bad luck on, on neighbours that time as well. But you could also wish for good luck yourself. So it was a 50-50. People were nervous. But uh, you could wish bad luck on your neighbours, which was a terrible thing to do. And the cow might milk for a long time, or the cow might die, or a pig might die, or bad luck would come on the house. But also I heard in reverse that if, if you wished for luck yourself, you would have luck. But it was a tricky place to go, seemingly. It was a very dark thing to do. But the word was all come header to me this fine May morning. And that had to be done before you spoke to anyone in the house, before you left for the well or the river. They have it in the 1947 survey from the Irish Folklore Commission. They sent out all these quest a questionnaire on, on uh, milk. And uh, it was it was amazing altogether. I think Patricia Lewis had wrote uh, an article on it back in, uh, in the 90s. Fantastic. But uh, well, part of it was there, was, there was one account of uh, a man in Waterford and uh, he was caught. Normally, though, you see, it was women. Women were in, in charge of dairy yeah. uh, production and they were, yeah. So they were they were also seen as the only ones to be normally doing this stuff. I mean, there was a, a account up in Derry where in the middle of the 19th century, this comes in from the 1947 questionnaire, where uh, a pastor... Uh, a Protestant uh, clergyman, uh, he concluded and, and, and revealed to everybody that he'd found your man's wife had been skimming the milk uh, and the, the husband died of embarrassment and shame. So but the idea was that it was, it was uh, it sort of got men off the hook. It was, it, was, it was concentrating on women. But it's interesting to hear that that was passed on in the male tradition, in, on the male side of the family, because normally it wouldn't have been associated. But also the one in Waterford, the version that was caught down there was this man was caught skimming a well and uh, in the 40s and he was thrown into the well. <clears throat> so that's a... Uh, and, and killed. Oh, that's yeah, well, the story, they didn't, yeah. they didn't yeah. mention that he was... Yeah. Uh, what happened to it, presumed yeah. that he died. But then also, like they took it very seriously. You did not... You had no business being on anybody else's yeah. land. 
yeah. it, it, on, on May Day. Yeah. I mean, we, we'd like to have nice romantic images of, of <laughs> what May Day meant in yeah, all celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did not start it from when from that, when that sun went down, that was the beginning of May Day on, yeah. on the 30th of April. And until noon the next day, you did not start because you had no business being abroad. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of people go out checking their hedges, yeah. they, uh, go out mending fences, uh, just <coughs> completely coincidentally, not yeah. at all. Just making sure that nobody was going to go yeah. anywhere near their land. And it was uh, in Cork again from the 1947 question yeah. here. It was said, anybody uh, goes, there's a lad just up the road there and he makes no bones about it. Anybody caught on his land in May will be shot. Yeah, and they absolutely took it very, very seriously. Yeah, and that's, I'm glad you said it as well because it's not this idea of little pretty girls in dresses mm-hmm. dancing around the maypole. This kind of tradition that's being put out, this kind of revived the kind of notion, right? In Ireland, it was very serious. It was dark. It was heavy. There's a woman I was only talking to this morning and uh, lives about three mile away from me, and uh, it's there's a it's this idea on a May morning you go out to your field and you'll find a hare or you'll find a woman actually. Sometimes you can find a woman. Sometimes it's a hare. This kind of shape shifting kind of f- figure. And this woman had a story that basically you go out and um, a woman will be milking your cows in the field, taking your, taking your profit. And then when you go to, uh, within a second she turns into a hare and the farmer goes to shoot her and then basically to follow the, the wounded hare into the house. This is like the, tr- the story you had in the last month and then when they go to find this bleeding woman. But I, I'll, I'll play that clip in a minute as well. But a, a lot of that came down to fear of, like see women were, the women, the, those independent women were, they, they made a living from, uh, making butter from selling eggs to were seen with a little bit of suspicion but, as yeah, well. There were old, old women, widows, uh, single women. Yeah. Uh, were And there were single men were, weren't trusted either. But this because May was uh, such a... It was based on femininity. It was based on, on because the production of milk was uh, by its nature. Then it, it was looked after by women. So it was women were the suspects, but they were scapegoated. And it was women scapegoating other women, uh, generally speaking. Yeah. But... Uh, Jenny Mac, you know, there, there was the, the, the whole hair thing as well. That goes back, Geraldus Cambrensis is talking about that tradition of w- women shape-shifting into hairs back as far as the 12th century. You know, it's definitely been much older than that in Ireland. Yeah. But what would happen in, in, in one of the versions of the story is that uh, the only do- hound who could capture that hair had to be a black hound, jet black hound with absolutely no white hair on it whatsoever. And sometimes like the hounds, so they, they, they'd find this hound and they'd all set out, they'd a whole lot of hounds would do it, and all the other hounds would fall off, and there'd be only this black hound left, a jet black hound, and you'd take a bite out of the hair just when it was close yeah. to a house, and yeah. somehow the hair would get in through the window, and they'd go in, and one version, like the, 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 there was the old woman in, in bed with her husband, yeah. when they walk in, and uh, they look around, they couldn't find his hair, and then they investigate further, and uh, she's got the wound where the bit of flesh had been taken out. Of. Yeah. Like in the other cases, it's, it's the hair being shot. Yeah. Well, well, I'll stick on this case. recording of this woman, um, uh-huh. um, only over the road here in in in, in the Dufferin, in, in Ballandagan, talking about Breda Hanrahan's her name, talking about the, the hair story which she heard from her own father. Well, this is a story my father used to tell us when we were children, uh, and it was um, this man was walking through the fields one day, and he had his gun. He always carried his gun with him. And he came across uh, an old lady milking his cow. So he, he said, he went over to see what she was doing. And she turned into a hare and she ran, and the hare ran off. So he um, shot the hare. That's how the story went. And he followed the hare and the drops of blood along. And he came to an old house and he found an old woman in the house and she was bleeding from the hip. So that was the story he used to tell. I don't know anything about it other than that. That was on May Day, was it? I don't know. He never said it was May Day. It was probably, um, probably maybe to do with witches or something like that. But he didn't mention. Maybe it was May Day now, but he didn't mention that. He just told the story as, as I'm saying it now. You know. And that was your father. Your that was that. Father. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and basically the woman was out milking the taking your milking your cow. Yeah, taking the milk from the farmer and. There was some kind of a story that if she took the milk, she would also take his butter. And butter was very valuable that time, particularly for the females of the of the homes, because that was the only money they had to spend for themselves. And there was a saying as well you had, there was a, a woman skimming the well. You heard that bit of a story as well. I did hear that story, one for me and one for you and one for me. But I don't know the exact story. But again, I think that was something to do with taking the butter belonging to the person where she was skimming the well. And was, were you told that was on May, in the month of May, was it? 
no, I, I wasn't. I suppose you might take it that it was on the Mount of May, but I, it wasn't really. Uh, it was May wasn't mentioned now. Whenever they might be telling that story, you know. And your father probably would have told you that 30, 40 years ago, wasn't it? Oh God, even longer. <laughs> it was certainly 40 years ago, anyway. Yeah. There's another one when you're talking about half for you and half for me as well. Is uh, they call it a uh, call in the Bialtna, a call of Bialtna, where people would stay in their houses until or no, they they would actually not light the fire until uh, afternoon because now especially there's a story told and uh, now it was real uh, yeah. but people looking over the sea from Clare to Galway and vice versa to see uh, had anybody lit their fire because if you were the first to light your fire they'd see the smoke coming up yeah. they were afraid they'd say again uh, they'd say the, uh, the look of that smoke be on me and the look of that smoke be on me or, or on us on our house instead and they're afraid that somebody's going to do that so even it's come the fire and the heart again. It's, it's it's to do with femininity and to do with traditional role of womanhood, and that also happens in where where a lot of the a lot of the uh, mythology around the stealing of milk happens in the heart where the churning is being yeah. done, and uh, like there, there's one version they say in I'm trying to remember the county it's clear I think where they say you need to put a to bit cinder. of a bit of salt in in the churn, yeah. and if if you suspect that your milk profit has been taken. And then you put the plowshare in the fire and you redden it. And then you start churning. And the person who's responsible for taking your, your we'll come uh, to profit, you. she'll be there. No, you got to, your door lo- closed, locked. And she'll be there scrabbing at the door. She'll yeah. be there uh, yeah. trying to get in. Yeah. But you do not let her in under any circumstance. Yeah. And uh, she eventually will go away and then you'll have all your, your milk profit back. Yeah. And uh, so th- it's again, it's, it's the hearth that's happening. And there's no room where the tailor's at the fire. And he sees a woman coming in and taking one of the pieces of coal from yeah. the fire. And does, what does he do? Only he, he puts another coal from the fire into a, a bucket of water that's close by. Yeah. Then she comes back and does it again. And he does it. He does exactly the same thing. The tailor is, for some reason, he's, he's given some sort of spiritual power over the whole thing uh, during this period of time. And the priest sort of came to replace that. They used to have masses said in places yeah. to stop the bad luck. But the tailor is particularly strong. Yeah. That mm-hmm. that that um that churning thing I've come across that numerous times. Did any if you go to anyone's house, you'd always put your hand to the churn for or let you take a look at the butter, which you'd, the butter wouldn't come. That was the kind of traditional thing. But I've come across and loads of people will talk about when they were churning. You'd always get a cinder out of the fire and put it under the churn, and um, when you were churning, I don't know what maybe it gave a little bit of heat to the milk. But that was the you'd always it was the ritual of that. And that thing we mentioned about the fire, that's a kind of common one. Even written in the culture of a plow or putting some metal into a fire. If someone was doing you harm, you'd put metal into the fire or a spade or some part of a plough and when that'll redden the person who's causing you bother or causing you grief will come to the door and they'll always come to you like in your case they'll come scrubbing at the door trying to get in to cause you bother but, come the, here. but it's into it one before you go live from that there's no the seed of the fire you see they were afraid if you were you never asked for a light for your pipe going in because on May Day because that was taking the seed of the fire which is just as important yeah. again look the women's yeah. realm here and but a man generally would come in and he'd ask for a seed. That, uh, you, normally he, would, he, he wouldn't even ask, but he'd take, he'd go down when nobody was looking. Yeah. And if he was caught, it would be bad luck for him because you're not supposed to take a, a light at all. In fact, you'd no business been, uh, being a stranger at somebody's but house. But fire was important place. too, though, Robbie. Oh, yeah, fire was the, huge. The seed of the fire, was, was, uh, that was the look. At that particular time, when, the, when you're talking about summer and the, the fire and the sun coming to its zenith and all the rest of it, yeah. uh, or at least coming into that quarter of the year, and uh, you had to bring that look with you. Well, the sun is coming out now. If you can see by the change of the camera, the lights probably changed because I can see the sun come breaking through the clouds outside. Uh-huh. But one of the things come here to me was um, the we were, we're, we're, we're I'm going to go back to the the butter stuff. Uh-huh. This woman, Breda um, Hanrahan, was telling me only only today this morning she was telling me that. Um, they would when they'd locked the doors would be locked the dairy doors would be locked because oh, yeah. people believed that these women would come in the middle of the night and steal your butter and they'd bring mm. it into the towns to sell um, and that's what they did with the, but they were kind of witches so the witches come down from Carlow that's what they said the witches would come across the mountain here in, the, in our case down from Carlow and go off and sell the butter in Inniscorty um, again it's mad but she had a saying now here's a saying for you a bowl old saying for you I'm see if I, I wrote it down this morning if I, if I can remember it she said her father used to say when they'd be fighting his children he says um Oh, your, uh, your, what's it? Jeez, if I can find it now. Uh, oh yeah, you're fighting like butter whores. A butter whore. There's a great word now for you. Well, they had in Monaghan. They had uh, as as ugly as a butter witch, as ugly as a butter hag. 
So it, again, it was I suppose people who were mistrusted again. Somebody who probably uh, hadn't got hadn't been blessed with great looks, or somebody who was old enough maybe, and they were just mistrusted. Uh, I think it was a very pernicious. Uh, yeah. I don't think it was uh, much to be celebrated in the fact that they would scapegoat. These yeah. were literally people being scapegoated. Was it pre-grudgery, Robbie? Was it this idea that basically someone who would actually wasn't a big farmer, who actually could make a living for themselves doing churning, selling eggs, whatever, they were just looked on as because they weren't they weren't part of the bigger society where they owned the land. You know, could could it be? Sure, even that's probably going on to this day. You know, if you're deciding, yeah, there, there mightn't even have to be cause. It could be yeah. uh, It could be the fact that that person uh, was scapegoatable. Uh, yeah. That you know that they were they were there living by themselves, not doing anybody any harm. The creators, and who knows? Uh, even if they had just enough to feed on, as far as some people were concerned, uh, that was too much for them. Yeah. So uh, they may not have even had much at all. Yeah. But now some of them were were probably through good husbandry. They'd do a good lot, and then the, on on the counter you'd have a rich a rich farmer's wife or whatever, mm -hmm. and her husbandry mightn't be so good, and she'd blame it on the on the <laughs> on the one down the way, and. Yeah. You know, there was a, but there was, it was all part of the whole general power play of people knowing their place in society yep. and not so, getting too uppity. And it was very conservative, yeah. very rigidly class drawn. And, uh, yeah. it, it's, it's and that, continued on, that continued on until a couple of decades ago. And still the, the trace oh, still, the trace still, there, still there. Still there. And then he just, I, I always get to me whatever you get all these people moving to the country. But in our case, we'd have dubs moving down to Wexford. Well, then you got the accents thing that you were right. I would forget about that. I don't get started on accents. <laughs> there it goes. But you know, you know, but people moving down and have these yeah. notions of the countryside and have these beautiful notions of the people of the countryside and they're, they're fantastic. Yeah. Like fuck the yard. They're they're serious. They were cultural. They were class divides there. And yeah. by Jesus, you, and, and when you were on one side of the class, you you knew you knew it was there, and you either went went went, went with it or went against it. Um. So sometimes these notions of uh, of uh, of rural living are far from what the, these these oh, yeah, uh, turner, there, there far from turner paintings. You know? There wasn't necessarily much solidarity among the peasants either. Now the the people there was and there wasn't. I mean there were there were people, ninety eight. There were the people who go out of their way to help yeah. any any stranger, yeah. and there were, there was you know like any like any walk of life anywhere else. Yeah. I mean things are so easy romanticized. Absolutely. But, but May Day, yeah, it was. It, you stayed at home. You did not venture out. And there was actually there was a crowd called Come on. pull the ropes. Oh yeah. Now that was a, a, an expression from Leitrim. Yeah. Because you see, it was called the Burach yeah. or the spansel of a cow. It was made out of cow hair. Yeah. And you'd use that. You remember we're talking about the Jew with the grass. Yeah. And you'd pull that along, and that would be nearly as good as skimming the well. And now you could use a briar eater to do it. And, uh, and you'd take some of the Jew with you. And that would be to take the look, the, again, the milk profit and the look, look of the land. But uh, now they had it, uh, they called them pull the ropes in Leitrim and Fermanagh. But in, in Donegal, in Ardara, they, they had a place called Ardara. Yeah. It was a Protestant again. It's yeah. the outsider again, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so she was using a cloth. Uh, you can use you can use cloth as well to do this and just to skim. You, you just drag it along the... I've come across that here, Robbie. I've yeah. come across a woman in Wexford talking about putting a cloth on the ground and basically yeah. collecting the dew and then wringing it out and keeping oh, it in yeah. the bottle or whatever for a cure. I don't have a recording of it, but I remember... There's so many things people will tell you. Here's one thing, actually, which is a lovely one. It's found in a lot of counties, but it's very strong here in Wexford. Yeah. And on a May Eve, um, and on May Day, May Eve mostly, and I'll, I'll, I'll play a record in a second of uh, women in Tipperary talking about it. Getting, you basically get the Easter water at Easter and you keep that then until May Eve when you go out and you bless the, bless the land. Now that seemed to be common. That was in Galway. That was up the country as well. Oh. But uh, but in, in, in Wexford, we had a particular name on it and we called it Tran Water. Sure and, did. Yeah, and Tran Water basically was, um, again, this, 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 this mark in a territory. And, and in, in the, basically you'd get water from the Friars in New Ross, uh, Wexford Town or Grantstown. Right, uh -huh. and if you didn't get down to them, they would come out. They'd come out on on bikes in most cases, or cars in the latter years, uh -huh. and you'd leave your water out, and the boys will come in and they'll bless it for you. You'll have stock water, tran water. Sometimes you'll have uh, um, you know, you'll have another water as well, I think, and you'll, you'll leave them with a donation, whatever you had, a cake of bread, or you'd leave them some money. And uh, you'd, what you do is on May Eve you'd go out, and you'll walk from one corner of the field to the other corner, and the other corner to the other corner, and you'd say nothing to anyone until you get back back over that gate. You'd spread the water with a cock's feather sometimes, spread it with a little bit of an old rushy stick sometimes as well, of an old bottle or a sweet tin, and then that blessed the land. Um, Thra that was Tran is from the Irish Thuran, which is uh, uh, the jacket beetle or the, uh, it was a weevil of some sort that used to be at the corner. Very common, it's, it's still around yeah, now. Yeah. It was a real thing, and Thuran is another Irish yeah. word used to be saying. The old people said, well, where you talk to many little land or farm and said that basically that uh, once, the, once the roller came, the tram disappeared. That was it, that was it. The, the, the roller got rid of it. But no matter where you go, people will talk about the tram or Robbie. Some people say it was, I, 
I'm confused about it because some people say it was a yellow worm, more say it was a white worm, and in some ways I'm kind of wondering did it exist at all? In some ways that what was yeah. it just was it just an older ritual about yeah. marking territory and protecting the land? You know, now we use the insect then as a yeah, yeah, sca- yeah. insect was the scapegoat. Yeah. Right? Well, but yeah. the only thing is now it did stop in the sixties. Uh, it stopped when the chemicals, when the pesticides came along. Yeah. So it probably was related to. Uh, I mean, they would have kept it going if it was purely tradition. Yeah. So I, I think there must have been the Turan must have been at work all right, uh, uh, gobbling up the the grain, the the barley or the wheat or whatever it was going. Can I stick on a neighbour of mine here? There's a neighbour of mine down the road here called. Um Jeez, Jerry Murphy, I'm forgetting his name there now. <laughs> and I filmed Jerry out in the field there la- last year, last May, and uh, just talking about Tran and Tran water and his father with a crop of barley. I'll stick it on for you, right? Tran water was, there was friars from New Ross used to come to the local parish every year, in the springtime of the year, and they'd, they'd travel around to the houses and they'd bless people that have water, and they'd bless it and make it, bless water for Trans, for the land water, I suppose it was called, and, and uh, They'd have other, another bottle of water then and they'd have a place for stock water. And uh, the farmers would use it then. Like, there was one one instance now my father used it on a, on a field of barley that was after being attacked by worms or trans or whatever they were called at the time. But it was tran water, it used to be called anyway locally. And uh, he just went in and walked <laughs> casually across the field corner ways and, and went to the other corner and come back to the gate. and. Spread it with a with a feather off out of a bottle, like, and, and just made a sign of the cross. And when he was coming out, out in the gate and closed the gate, and it worked out all right anyway. <laughs> the barley was cut anyway when the harvest time come, and it was seemingly all right. But it didn't look very good at the time that it, he was spreading on it, like. But it was I was left up to himself, like he could have either tore it up or, or tried this. But sure, them old fellas had to believe anyway that the, that had worked. So it seemingly did work. <laughs> You know, so that was that was basically it. I mean, everyone, every farmer, I suppose, in the locality had the same. Like, you know, they had all people had the belief. Like, and did you remember years ago blessing the land on in May on the May Eve, blessing blessing the fields with Easter water or the tram water? They do well. I make the sign to cross across the field. I did it. I did it myself, and I had a way to get the tram water from the friars in Wexford. That right, yes. You have to have a coat in the car and you put the tram water on it. That's right. And you'd walk across the land and from corner each... to corner, make the sign to cross across the field, from corner to corner. That's right. Remember that well. I did it. That's right. Easter Sunday, you'd go for the Easter water to the church, and bring for a couple you of want... containers of it anyway, and you'll keep it until the first of May. And uh, you'd um, get out your bottle in and you'd uh, do the house first with it. Spread the yeast water around the house and on the animals and in the fields to give you good luck. If you didn't, uh, they, they said that you, they'd take, you know, they take, uh, they wouldn't have good luck if you didn't spread it, the yeast water. Uh, I still bring out the Easter water yes. to the garden even and shake it. The, well, the Easter water. Yeah, that's and, right. And uh, we used to shake it on the cows going out after milking. And I lived in the country as yeah, the cows. I didn't live in the country until I came to Bantry, but When they were going I... out, they'd be going out on grass for the first day. They'd be after being in all the winter. And we'd shake the Easter water on them. Hmm. Yeah. But my mother used to do it around the house, the ordinary house, and the four corners. Back in front and inside. Yeah. And I still keep it up. People would be, I suppose, laughing at you. But I still keep it up, mm-hmm. sprinkling. Yeah. I even yeah. done it this yeah. year. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. I do it every year. Yeah. The four corners of the okay. place and the house, four corners yeah. of the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every year I do it. Mm. There was another thing then, the, rog- the rogation days. That we used to go out the holy water. And shake it in the yeah, crops. In the direction. And the animals and on your house and everywhere. Well we do that, yes. Yeah. Do do I don't forget I do, I suppose. We do, yeah. 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 I would. I'd go around with it. The yeah. Easter water. Easter water. It comes from the Latin verb rogare, task. A tree rogation days. Well the Easter. priest would bless a barrel of Easter water for us at the church. 
and we'd all be coming with bottles and we take them, I've seen people taking two large bottles of Easter water and I know for one of my sister is sick. Oh, yeah. And you walk the headlands of all the fields you have mm. and you sprinkle it with Easter water and the crops will all grow. It was related to, even though it was done on May Eve, Robin, May Day, uh -huh. do, do, do you ever hear of the, uh, there's a, also people who talk about the three rogation days. There were the three days in the lead up to Ascension Thursday. That's right. I, I heard of it, but don't know much about it. But yeah. you, that was what the lads there from Offaly were talking about. Really. Yeah, they, they'd yeah. spread it on, the, on that day. On Clark Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd spread it on those three days. The three days, you know, there were, and I think that's, mm -hmm. you find it in England, you find it across, uh, across, across Europe, where it was kind of the blessing of the crops or the blessing of the land. So again, it's that, I'd say it's that Christian building upon what was probably there beforehand, you know. It's a lot of work, uh, like a lot of walking of land. Uh, you're talking about crossing, the, crossing every field you have. You know, it's uh, it's gorgeous, though, isn't it? I know, it's a nice way to walk your land. Well, you maybe you're checking the boundaries while you're at it. Well, it was on May Day. You know? Well, that's exactly because some people talk about up mm. the country. They'll talk more, but I've come across awfully Tipperary where they just go to the gate and throw yeah. the water into the gate. But your boundary stuff is interesting because when you're going across that, you're you are making boundaries. You're you're, you're there's a you're, you're marking space. You know, that's yeah. where you have, and that's what remember the, the confluence of rivers is very often how yeah. uh, the, the central centrality of water in how. Townlands are marked, and and how how uh, ba baronies are marked. Whether yeah. it's from it's just a coincidence of geography how this was done. Yeah. But they have double significance in the fact that they are water. Yeah. And uh, and that they have power if if you are at that confluence of three points. Yeah. And you can work magic. And in Kerry, that's what they used to do. They used to put the burach, or the spansel, into the and it wasn't just Kerry, but that's just what, what yeah. one account that comes to mind. Uh, that, that you could do once you did that, you could start your uh, skimming the water from that tree from that tree confluence place with the Burach yeah. and you were made and you were in great form altogether right, and for next year yeah. is it interesting even our current map when you look back at the OSI they were all tree points they were all based on trees weren't they wasn't it tree? if I'm, if yeah. I'm right they were based on this, the tree points yeah? but listen come here to me one of the things we, we can't get, get away from me is the whole notion of the I suppose the, the bonfire as my grandmother used to always call it she used to always call it the bonfire and should the Irish for but a, bo a bonfire is Tinnikanov, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Well, bo a bone, yeah, it is. But bonfire is, is another, it's just a, a corruption yeah. of bone, bonfire. Yeah. So yeah. you used to put bones on it. Yeah, I come across that Mayo, I've come across it down here as well, where you'd have a, a bonfire. Westford Town bonfire as well. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And remember Granny saying years ago as a child, you'd be sent out and you'd be going out looking for bones. The children would go out walking, looking uh -huh. for bones for this bonfire. But that was one of the things that was done an awful lot. And uh, it was a, uh, we kind of forget, there was a woman I recorded down in screen. She mm. said that on the 1st of May, to let out the cows. And when they let the cows out into the field, they'd have to run them through, through, through fire. Now, it, off the top of my head, I think, I, when I'm back to talk to her, she described it, it's not on, the, on this recording, but she said it was two little fires and it went out through it. And basically then they would stop the fairies milking the cows in the field. Um, and that was always done here, letting the cow, the cattle back out onto the land. Now they're probably let out earlier now, whatever. Well, they might not actually because the weather is shite. But uh, but maybe you know it, it didn't always fall on the first of May. But she no. said, but maybe there were set dates that people did let the cattle back out on the first of May. You know, maybe it depends on the weather as well. I suppose it would. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you weren't going to uh, weren't going to turn your land into ranu. Yeah. Into 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 all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prashik. Yeah. In, but see, you had to leave it. Yeah. Uh, you weren't going to ruin it because yeah. you'd be. Uh, you keep them in as long as you're good fodder, I suppose. But, yeah. but then back in the days, uh, 19th century, I'm not, I don't know if there are stores of hay, that if their barns were as big, you know. Yeah. Uh, in traditional traditional cultures, they might not have had such stores, you know. So, they wouldn't uh, have the same amount of cattle either. Exactly. Smaller, yes. uh, yeah, much, yeah. Much and, and with smaller cattle too. Yeah. You know, yeah. The Kerry Blues and all. Yeah. Tiny little cows. Yeah. So, you know. Well, I'm going to stick on this woman talking about running the cows out, to the, out, out into the field. And then I'm going to fo follow up with a man. I record him by accident. It was a, uh, in Gory uh, last year a man called Jimmy Egan and uh, he's talking about big bonfires that were held like this is the thing as well we forget that actually the, the tradition he says died out 10 years ago you know some people remember 10 years yeah. ago could, could have been 30 years ago yeah. but it wasn't that long ago the whole bonfire tradition around around Beautana around May died out in Gory and it's still it's still carried out in some counties it's incredible uh, now again I, I only come across this really in the schools collection but they are absolutely amazing well, no, it's not the bonfire that they have down in South Wexford. It, it's the it's burning of the May bush, but it's not. It's like the May bush is got, and the May bough. have got. It's found all over South, uh, over Munster and South Leinster and that, yeah. and, and and probably the Midlands as well. But the uh, that's a slightly different tradition where you put the May bush. Yeah. But this was a different thing. It was probably associated with the bonfire in that you put the May bush 
in the middle of a field. The May bush is literally it could be a few branches of a of a gorse or furze yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. But then you decorate it with primroses, marigolds, or whatever uh, yellow yellow type flowers. Uh, wallflowers are also yeah. used for some yeah. reason. Now you you'd. Uh, and so what they do is they they have picnic and have games around that the young lads and I'm thinking this must have been May the first it wouldn't have been May Eve, and they would have done this so they, uh, you can imagine that noon everything is clear uh, the the coast is clear yeah, you yeah. can go rambling again, and so the, what they do is they find the the, the uh, May bush they have a bonfire or burn the May bush, yeah. uh, well they wouldn't be burning the May bush at this stage they just have the May bush in the middle of the field, and then what they do is when the, when the sun goes down on May the first yeah. then they they. Uh, They'd light the candles on the yeah. on the bush. Yeah. There could be a dozen candles yeah. in one count yeah. on the May bush, and they'd light the candles. When them candles, they'd be playing music and, and dancing yeah. and all the rest. And when the candles had burned down, then they'd uh, they'd just burn the May bush, yeah. and uh, that that was burning away all the bad luck. Yeah. Well, in Newfoundland, down and around around Branch, down uh, down the Cape Shore. Uh, I've got some photographs from friends over there, and yeah. they put fairy lights on their maybush. Wow! So there could be a, your light, your lighting version too. Because obviously, the Christmas tree they originally would have had little candles on them for light. So and then over time, we would have put electric lights on them. So in Newfoundland, they carry on the, the version of that again, whatever. But listen, I tell you what, we'll, we'll get back to the maybush in a while, the may bow and mm-hmm. all that stuff in a while. I'm going to stick on Jimmy Egan here, and I'm going to stick on um, the, uh, Nelly Roach down in screen talking about fires and running cattle through fires. Jimmy, we're here in. Ramsford Avenue. Ramsford Avenue, yeah. In Gorey. That's right. Was there a big bonfire on May Day years ago? Always. Yeah, always. There was stuff gathered for a month beforehand. Chairs and timber and tyres and mattresses, whatever you had, you throwed in on it and it was all going there and it burnt out into the small hours of the morning. There used to be a big crowd around it, like, you know. But there wasn't any music. There was music at the one in the Garden City, you know. And they were dancing at it as well, like, you know. They used to dance with these old twigs, you know, the, the that's for sweeping the floor, like. That's all, like, that, that it was, really, like. But that went on every year for years, you know, and in the last, what, about, what, ten years now, there hasn't been any, like. But up to that, there was. So, and was that on May Day or May Eve? Oh, oh May Day, yeah. First of May. Well, well no, it had been the evening time, like. Yeah. Evening time now, like, you know. Coming up like seven o'clock, then in around there, like you know, a start around that time, like a big bonfire over oh, here. Oh, huge, yeah. We're all over the place, actually. They? They're all over the, this town, like you know. That wasn't the only place there, like you know. There used to be one in the Garden City down here, like and all over the place. Bonfires. Bonfires, yeah. And I mean big ones, like. Hello, Michael. <laughs> And the, in, in our place above, uh, never allowed the cows until the first day of May, and they had the, the little fire, and they had to drive the cows through it, through the fire, every, every May, and uh, because then the fairies wouldn't milk the cows in the field. But the burning of the bush was, uh, and it was related to the bonfire yeah, tradition, absolutely. and that goes back uh, apparently to the Malaysian invasion of Ireland, yeah. and they sent the Tuatha Dé underground as, as fairies, according to the Lower Gawala, yeah. the Book of Invasions, and uh, when they sent them underground anyway, uh, before they did, the Tuatha Dé Danann had one ruher, one uh, last rush to have a go to try to kill Amergan, uh, the, the head of the Malaysian, the, the chief ma- uh, magician, but before they could do it, uh, a big bush, a burning bush, a uh, massive one, came up in front of them and they weren't able to get any, any further and it actually drove them back. And that was the end of their fight. And their race was richie, their race was run. You've that, Rick, that was down in Tagot or Down to go, to go, to go, to go as I mentioned yeah. that in, in the school's collection. Yeah. I think, or maybe it was Ella Doyle of Kilran, I think. Kilran, yeah. yeah that yeah. was, yeah. yeah. It's incredible. I, but w- the tradition around here, like we have it, is you burn the, the, the May bush when it's down, when it's wet or down, you'll burn it. Some people would burn it come, you'd save it for St. John's Eve or around the middle of June and you'd burn it then, um, while more, did, 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 you'd burn it any time afterwards. But, but it was June you'd burn it, you know. Yeah. Um, but come here, um, I'm just thinking, I've... Um, a song here from Jesus myself and Robbie did a, uh, an event last year in the National Library it was a, year, a whole year ago and there's a recording we did of uh, Padraig and the Hooligan talk singing uh, our own uh, Nekriva oh, um, so I've got a lovely recording of that will I stick it on that's beautiful yeah, yeah. Go on, we'll stick it on and we'll break it up with a song 
She moch rius a criun man no sel hai do very wal asai di. Criun a galin is criun a moch al hai do very wal asai di. Criun in your shacher in you la who were hai do very wal asai di. Musha hai a galin ka we mundi no her hai do very wal asai di. I am much bochel so well than on one I guy do very well as I do. O bochel learn to load a sock larger I do very well as I do. A very say yag shaw freed the tree nation I do very well as I do. O well a go well as a rash good gin nacho I do very well as I do. Tog mwyn lyn i sws yn y wahr a'i do fer i wal y saith i. An na ch y gas i dwi'n gai chi do e gair a'i do fer i wal y saith i. Cas i si dar i'n sgwyd hat i'n yn arn lo a'i do fer i wal y saith i. An na ch y mei a ch y sol y sbors a'i do fer i wal y saith i. Ga ke dalak shrint yoyr er in yedan hai do veri wal as hai di. Is ga ke dalak er hi u gach shleva hai do veri wal as hai di. An nere chinele do walt di stereti hai do veri wal as hai di. Musha hai a khali ni yarget di spredi hai do veri wal as hai di. Is kosul mor grim na le mokken na ma I do very well as I do. No le shan long bris to kush jachem mala harlin. I do very well as I do. Fit and win till you and nisha so real and I do very well as I do. Oh, fit and win till you to not win to go even. I do very well as I do. Or oh, win when you nerdy is win when you mlean. I do very well as I do. Stir her more a rhythm so win when her you were. I do very well as I do. I do in you, I do more, I do very well as I do. I do in you as I do more, I do very well as I do. And that was a song the Padrigin got from, I think it's an Oriel song, and from the Oriel uh, area of, I suppose it's uh, Loud, um, Armagh. She's a beautiful album that she released uh, but nearly 20 years ago, and I forget what the name it was, but it was all music from, uh, it was Jalgna Nord, I think it was called, and it was all music from the Oriel uh, and South Armagh area, so North Loud, South Armagh, yeah. maybe South Down. And beautiful, and she has the accent off to a T because the local dialect, which is the East Ulster, but absolutely beautiful, and uh, a great singer, a lovely person. And, uh, and she gets it to because um, she spoke last year. We were talking about Hawthorn, and it kind of uh, struck me for loads of reasons. Whenever um, was one thing you'd never do uh, uh, was bring the Hawthorn into the house. My mammy at home, no one. You would not be fucking be ran if the heart horn came in, and that's the common one all over the country. Mm-hmm. Um, so just you don't bring it in. That's the and that and loads of people talk about bad luck and things. If a, a hen was set in the hen, get up off the nest and leave the nest. You know the, the flowers. There's they're, they're supposed to be fierce bad luck. Um, and even if that's why maybe they're put over the thresholds, the doors were never let, never let in. They were never let in. You know. Um, but one thing actually talking about thresholds, uh, Robbie, there was a great uh, DJ out here. Mm-hmm. These are the legs. Um, and now an egg is a powerful thing for loads of reasons we all to, for, for, for loads of reasons and as we knew from last episode yeah, yeah. absolutely and I, I don't know whether I mentioned it before but the, the, the holly that was kept up for at Christmas my mother always kept the holly up that was used on Pancake Tuesday then for to, on the, to light the fire and the pancakes were used or the last of the eggs were used up Pancake Tuesday for Lent then you went out gathering eggs going for eggs and come Easter Saturday and then come Easter Sunday you would um, the girls mostly would hang on to the, hang on to the eggshells and they'd paint them and they'd keep them then for the May bush. But one of the kind of more kind of malicious, vindictive things with eggs, on May Eve, you come across a lot of people who'd put them in boundary ditches, you'd put them into the drills of spuds, you'd put them into chase, you'd put them into the buyers, or put them into the buyers in the barns where the cows are for, for bad luck. And you'd sneak in on May Eve and you'd do this. Now, I've come across it from, it's from Kerry, it's in Cork, it's in Wexford, uh, Tipperary. I don't know where, up, up, further up the country, where, whether it's found. 
but uh, it was done wholesale. People remember it. And bacon as well, you were saying? Right? Bacon as well. I've come across bacon in Tipperary from a few people in North Tip, bacon for some reason. Bacon and rose bushes, of all things, because rose bushes wouldn't be, you know, you, you, it's not a crop, but by Jesus putting them into, into boundary ditches and stuff like that. Um, and people, and I, 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 I. That's put, amazing. It reminds me of when people used to build houses. And this is in English folk as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, that they'd put something in the foundation of a house. Should we do that here? <laughs> yeah. And the idea was that that'd be good luck for yeah. them, for any for all the dwelling and for everybody in it. So it, it strikes me a bit as being the opposite to that. That's yeah. Right. We when we were building a house here, um, and a lot of people still I was getting a little shed built there a couple you know, two years ago. So you'd always throw the money in around the boundaries of the of the of the shed or the house for for luck. It was meant for luck, you know. You throw the, the money you into you went into it. But listen, um, I will play a little recording from, from Tipperary. Uh, it's recorded over 10 years of people talking about eggs and the placement of eggs in uh, in, uh, in Round's home for, for, for to get someone back. Sounds enough. great. We'll know what to look out for. Absolutely. Yeah, don't want my eggs. <laughs> At that time, a lot of fowl used to lay out and people knew where they were laying and they'd watch them. And May Eve, they go out and they'd collect the eggs that would be in the nest and bring them in. And in the dark of the night, then they'd go in and put them into the farmers, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Into the farmers. Yeah. yeah. Um, bales, you know. Yeah. Uh, cow bales. I'm talking about what, where they'd drive the cows into, you know. Mm. And the cows would sling. Yeah. If they were in calf, they'd sling. And if they didn't do that, the milk it all cruddle. Yeah. Mm. I heard that when May Day come, or May night or whatever, they'd put uh, the eggs down in the drill and they covered it in a little bit clay. And that was the cause of bad luck for whoever owned the place, I don't know. But uh, sometimes if, if, a, if a person or a the farmer's wife found uh, the eggs in a boundary ditch that was between them and the next farm. They think that was a pretty sure somebody put them there to wish them bad luck. And they think they're going to have some bad luck in their farm, you know, somebody put the... They used to blame people for putting the eggs there, not the hens. I heard about eggs was um, on May Eve. The people, well, peace rogues really, were uh, afraid of their crops and all that. And uh, there were certain people, only certain types of people, they used to go around with eggs and put them in the drills and whatnot. To, that, that meant he'd have a bad crop and they'd have a good crop. Oh, see. He'd take the potatoes or whatever was sold, mm. he, they couldn't to develop in his and be good mm. and theirs would be failures. Mm. So uh, if you find eggs in your boundary ditches or your drills, looking out, uh, the Dubliners you're alright mostly, uh, or anybody living in the cities, <laughs> just uh, look, have a look over your garden wall if you have a garden, if you're in an apartment, I don't know what you, you do yeah. there. So, uh, yeah. I wonder did actually many of these do those kind of things actually we mentioned in cities did, did any of that kind of boundary stuff travel in um, you know like I'm sure it had to exist in Dublin had to exist well, in there's Dublin. a big one in Dublin is the north side south side divide and that yeah. wasn't imaginary uh, that definitely existed uh, they, actually it's a great coincidence now you mentioned it they actually the uh, the Smithfield lads went down uh, it's uh, heavily yeah. there used to be riots they'd always go down and try to rob the, the uh, Maybush from the Liberties and the Liberties lads had tried the same and that would be the trophy yeah, yeah. and there'd be, there'd be riots over it yeah. and this happened well up until the late 19th century Yeah. and uh, no, it, was, it was a very big thing north side south side bring it across the river yeah. and again the river boundary being a big thing and you get that still in Dublin the, the, the Tolka and, the, and the, the Dodder and the various boundaries going on and there's you know there's there's a uh, there's a very sense of well not sense I'd have to do more detailed research on it yeah. but uh, from what I've heard and what I've experienced you know there there are some supernatural and ghost uh, ghost uh, stories yeah. and all the rest around such boundaries and uh, 
yeah. and the idea that a ghost not being able to cross water and an escape from one part to the other and it yeah. is amazing what does transfer over into urban life in the Banshee is spotted in that lone in a car yeah. park for instance in the yeah. last 10 years you know yeah well, I, I, thing, we, we did a lovely recording in Limerick years ago and, and the Banshee lived in the handball alley if you went in and touched the four corners and said the Hail Mary touched the four corners again actually touched mm-hmm. the four corners and said the Hail Mary backwards the Banshee will come out and haunt you I never thought of the four corners it's like the four corners of the field I want to get back to the May bush mm-hmm. um, we're going to come yeah, we're going to kind of end with kind of a whole section on kind of May bush and, the, and, and, and that, that whole area now, you'd, you'd have it on the boundary as well so you'd, you'd put it close to either close yeah. to the boundary or close to the gate of the house or in front of the house yeah. or in front of the, the dairy but and it was said uh, in one account it says that um, if you had a May bush in front of the house neither thunder nor lightning would go near the house for the rest for the next year you know which is, uh, but for those of you who don't know because a lot of people don't know and again just, just uh, the May bush we put up the May bush my mother put it up on and off over the years and she, and my grandmother would have put it up but she stopped doing it and she replaced it with the May altar now the May bush is not particular to Wexford, it's found all up, right up the country, right up to Ulster. I'd still see it in Offaly, I'd still see it in Kildare, I'd still see it in, Jesus, in Carlow, you know, you'll still see it, and you'll still see it up in the northern, up, in, up towards in the north as well, as far as I can see. And there's variations of it, you have like a May bush, which is traditionally a skiok or a gorse, and that was a bush cut down and decorated. But you'll have like the May bow, which is a smaller version of it, whatever, or a little sprig, and that was, you know, that, that tradition was kind of more more kind of practice further further west where it'd be put over the threshold of the door going in. Mm-hmm. You'll have May flower tradition again um, of the sprinkling of flowers on thresholds on windowsills or on doors. Um, and that again was mostly Boundary, in the west yeah. boundaries again yeah. but it was also found and came across at Narclaw it came across in South Wicklow wow. and North Wexford as well yeah. um, but what I might do is before it's I yap on anymore oh, before I, you do before you yap on I need to interrupt you do, you're on. talking about gorse there yeah is oh. that, is that, is <laughs> the same as furs is it or whins same as a whin whins a whin, yeah. whins that's a good old English word a whin. Yeah, yeah. but then uh, but then there's a, a word here we have in Wexford and I don't know if they have it anywhere else where yeah. a, a farmer a small farmer what do you have a whin yawn of a farmer a whin on. A man told me back up near the mountain, whatever, he said, Oh, that'll be only a whinion of a farmer. And a whinion meaning it's basically, it's funny, you get the, the old, Eng- probably middle English word of her, an old English word for whin, then yawn is the, putting the Irish kind of twist or it's on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but you also have a skull oak, which is uh, from around this part of the county as well, used for a small farmer. So, yeah. And they weren't taught in high renown, these were words they're putting them down yeah. now. But yeah. it's, uh, and a whinion meant basically this land was, uh, wasn't that good, so the whole land would be full of winds or full of gorse or. Well, no, but down, down uh, there was a lad I was speaking to, John Cousins, and uh, if you're watching it, John, how are you keeping there? A long time since I saw you, and thinking about you, well done. Um, but John gave me the word out. We, he used to, they used to go collecting whin yawns, uh, another word for twigs down in Cairn. Right. Uh, whin yawns used for twigs, but yeah. this what they would, might have been garsa or furze twigs as well. Yeah. So. And brusna sticks. Brusna, oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they had that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Sp- or sprigs. Yeah. But listen, come here to me. I want to tell you before I go on, go on I want to let you have a listen to people from uh, Tipperary talking about the Maybush up, up, up in Tipperary and where you'd put it. Okay. <laughs> and you put a Maybush in, in yeah. the cow hip. I remember, the cows. I wish to remember that always. Yeah, with Maybush. Was that what it was? It was the Maybush, yeah. Yeah, keep the fish hogs away, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, Maeve. First, you go out and you shake holy water all around the four corners of your field or garden, wherever you had, and you picked a bit of a maybush on your way back. And you just, as you're going in, you put hang, hang it over the door. Just to have a may bush. A may bush. In my yes. time, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you push in the fields. Push, push in the dung here. <laughs> yeah. And we used to put all ribbons on it, and we used to get flowers and. Tie them around in bunches and sew them onto all the branch, or just stick them onto the branches. All oh, the work we used to do with the May bush. Then <laughs> mm. the May tree, the May tree. Yeah. You'd um, get the a bit a of the, the May bush, yeah, yeah. and put it in the pole and decorate it with flowers. Yes. That. I don't know what that was supposed to do, but. That was the yeah, we, we all did it. Yeah, we all did it. Yeah, so it was yes, we did. Well. Yeah, mm, we put on. Mm. You'd have a dunghill. Yes. I would stick it down into the dunghill. Oh yes. Put the uh, cow slips and primroses and yeah. all tied it on it. I don't know what that was supposed to be for, but we all did it anyhow. And uh, it was a bit of um, a may bush 
put on the um, outside chicken up in the evil house. I was supposed to bring good luck. So that tradition of the May tree, is to call it in that part of Tipperary, or the May bushes, which is kind of generally known here, uh, was you'd put it into, uh, it was done all over here in Wexford as well, was that you'd always put it into the into the dome. Into, and up in Donegal did the same, you stick it into the, into the, into the, into the dome as well. Um, so that's surely symbolises, or maybe, or maybe it was just basically the pr practical, the, you'd stick it down into the dome, but I think there's oh, deeper no, there's that. It is deeper, because do you know that, that uh, one of the things that it's stealing implements uh, was it was uh, something you'd have to watch out for as well on May Day, because that'd be stealing your look, but also stealing cow shit. Yeah, uh, cow dung. Uh, that would be that would be people would do that as well to take away the look. So there was Steve, a stealing cow shite for look. Oh yeah. So what's that, what's that lovely Irish word for boyan, isn't it? Oh yeah, but well, that's bo boshan or a boshan. A boyan as well. A boyan, yeah. Have, yeah. yeah. Well, you see, you, yeah. Yeah, there's so many pronunciations. Yeah, yeah. That one word alone in Wexford and bojan is another one. Yeah, yeah. So you, there's so many, uh, and and basically, but that's dried cow dung used for, uh, for fuel for cooking for fire, uh, yeah. by by uh, by yeah. poor people. Yeah. But but it's uh, just just on the first of May though. Uh, uh, Bealtaine cow dung had its own significance because again well it was fertiliser but it was, it was cut from the cow you see absolutely so. and can we that, that, that whole May bush thing so what I, what I might do is I might just throw up some photographs for those of you who don't know what a May bush is right and I'll throw up some photographs for you uh, of May bushes that were probably from that myself and my other half here are involved in a, basically it's a very it's a ground up voluntary festival called the May Bush Festival and we're basically getting the tradition of the May Bush back up onto back into the narrative and back into the conversation to get the Wexford people because loads of people did it loads of people would have done it publicly there were May, public May Bushes at Crossroads there was one at Bennett's Bridge and Castle Bridge there was one in Kalena there was all over the county there were these places where May bushes were put up and you'd have a May dance you'd have a dance you'd have music and you'd have crack now someone said that the old Catholic church got in the way of having the crack part of it and they kind of uh, they, that was a reason why they retreated now maybe it was on, on its decline but a lot of people carried on doing the tradition privately there was family just, I kind of noticed and we put out the call there in the last couple of years people have come forward going I still, still do that and my mother was one of those who did it on and off, but never really, wasn't done every year. It was done every now and again, you know, that kind of way, depending on what humour she was in, but you stick up something. Um, and you've got your granny doing it as well on the video. I do, I've, I've, got, I've got her from talking about, she was born in 1912, so this, these accounts, yeah. I'm assuming, are probably 1920s, 1930s accounts. Probably 1920s, she was talking about being a, a, a child. Uh, I wasn't planning on showing it, but well, let's stick it on. Oh, yeah. Now, it's very quiet, it's a recording from 2002, it's just me and her chatting um, by the fire, talking about the, the May Bush and the May Bush dance in Kalena, which is up in uh, North uh, East Wexford. So I'll stick it on for you. Well, there used to be a great night up in Kalena, the May Bush. Well, there used to be a great night up in Kalena, the May Bush. What, what, what kind of bush would it be? I suppose of any sort of a tar or a bush or something like that. Take a red, I don't know. Did you bring up, when you bring Big up stuff? Bush. Huh? What would you do, would you bring up stuff and tie it on it? Then? Bits of old ribbons, no eggshells, and stick him up on it. Would you paint the eggshells at all? We didn't. No, left them where they were. I never was at a May bush, but only just we used to make when I was children. No eggshells and that. Make them, put down things on a bit of a tarn or something. Oh. Stick it down and put them on the other you bring it torn inside or would you do it outside? No, I would say in the yard. In the yard? Yeah. And when did you do that? First of May? Yeah, May day. Would you not have school then? Would you not have to do when you come home? Or she says, I forget me whether we had school, when the school to be closed there or what. Yeah. We also may have shoot the days that time the evenings would be as bright and as long. You ah, never see the children going through the fields now picking a bunch of primroses and and what's that cups and everything. We used to have every jump up in the palace full with them. The whole time? Yeah, outside in the windows and everywhere we had them. Jump pots of primroses. Flowers? Yeah, both the cups. Cocoa flowers. Would you put any flowers in the maybush? Yeah, you could, yeah. Would you, do you ever make them old daisy chains? Would you make up them for it no more? We made daisy chains and we made everything. For the maybush? Yeah. And when would you take the bush down? Oh, sure, I suppose maybe in a week or so, I don't know. Maybe the weather down, I don't know what 
Alright. What was the open plan then? Just have a bit of a dance tonight. Yeah. Good sport. And that was my grandmother talking from 2002. Now as Robbie was saying, there were loads of variants of the, of the Maybush. So sometimes people put them up in their home, more people put them across roads. Um, sometimes you had this lovely tradition as well uh, of um, a May, almost a, a May procession or a May parade. And basically what you would do is you would get the bush, uh, either a skiok or like a white thorn or a piece of, a piece of gorse or a whin, and you'd, uh, the children would grab it and they'd walk up and down the street or maybe if they and they'd uh, look for money, a penny for the penny for the May bush, and you th that goes back. You've re well, we have uh, many for a uh, penny for the May Queen because yeah. they, they dovetailed into the May Queen and down again down in uh, Tagos, Kiran area, they would have they spoke was spoken and Warrentown they would have spoken about the the girls all wearing white, yeah, and they'd choose the May Queen, yeah. uh, out of this. I'll, I'll stick a photograph up right now actually right. of um oh god I I I'm off her name it's Margaret Nash up in Coograney. Uh -huh. And there's a photograph, black and white photograph here from the early 60s of Margaret sitting in the back of a trailer dressed up as the May Queen and the May bushes behind her. You'll see it in the photograph and the young fellow playing the accordion. So who would have dovetailed that, Robbie? Was that was that a church thing? Was that an add-on with the no, church? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, the, the Queen of the May was St. Mary and all the rest of it. I think the May Queen goes back to, uh, it was in English pagan rituals as well. That uh, goes way back. So I, I think that the, the church... Would have been more interested in getting the the Blessed Virgin Mary and statues of Mary put up, yeah, and uh, this sort of thing, and also the May altar would have been part of that. Yeah, so, yeah. so they would have been more interested in take taking the uh, taking the phone out of it. I yeah, suppose, you know, uh, it's funny you say this. I'm going to go back to Mick, Mick O'Sullivan up in Camolan. Um, he talks about putting up the May bush up in Cran Ford when he was a child yeah. back in the thirties. I think he mentions, and I'm going to let you listen to it now. I'm going to yeah. root it out for you and let you listen to it. But he mentions about putting the May bush up, and then the Virgin Mary. I uh, was stuck at the bottom of it, and they did the rosary. You remember the May bush here, Mick, in uh, Camolan? Oh well, <coughs> I don't remember <coughs> May May bush in Camolan, but we had one up in Ballyshan, May my mother's and pa father's time, and we used to rake it up out in the yard. And uh, <coughs> what would you say? It would have got their eggshells, and put eggshells on and primroses. And my mother bring out the statue of Our Lady and it at the foot of it. And we say the roads around the Maybush when we were children. That's right. I be talking about the uh, 30s and early 40s. That's right. I'm 85. No. <laughs> so there's the, the two things mixing together. And also there's a friend of mine, Wilfred Conway over in Newfoundland. He sends me photographs of the, his mother's Maybush. And the, mother's, the, the Maybush in Newfoundland, this particular one, was... Uh, it was like whatever tree they had, it was like a spruce tree, uh -huh. stuck up in a bit of an old pole. Uh, but the Virgin Mary was stuck on top of it. So the Virgin Mary was part and parcel of See, I think that was coming after the famine, after yeah. the Devotion Revolution, which was bought in, Cardinal Cullen bought it in in the, yeah. in the 1850s. I think they were trying to, uh, they were trying to, re uh, how was the word, religiousize uh, these pagan uh, rustic festivals. And yeah. They were trying to, uh, trying to control, put a certain amount of air uh, control on them. A bit of rebranding. A bit of rebranding is a yeah, perfect yeah, way yeah, of putting yeah. it. Or market, yeah. hire a company now to do whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah. one thing about, about, about I, I have a lovely recording of, actually two recordings. One was a recording a couple of months ago of Wexford tra women, or traveller women, lived up mm -hmm. in Dublin. But they remember going for a, a nighttime procession or parade out in the Ballock, back probably you're talking the 60s. And they remember whatever, uh, putting up the bush themselves and all the children going up and down the street shouting Mayday, Mayday. Wow. In the dark though, had to be in the dark. And this is what, what we, you, you'd mentioned already, but this, when it got dark at whatever, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Yeah, was this May night now, not May Eve? Uh, May, yeah, May night. And oh. she said it'd be midnight. Uh, yeah. so, you're, so you know yourself, this time of year now, it's not getting dark till half nine, ten o'clock. Oh, so yeah. it's really only getting dark, you know, so you, you will have to, you'll have to cross that, that threshold, that 12 o'clock threshold, you know. God. And they had midnight mass as well. Midnight God. mass, because we're so used to midnight mass at Christmas. This is a midnight mass in the ballad May. yeah um, and then I'll also I, I will can I play the woman from New Ross that was lovely I recorded on my phone there last Saturday I was down met these women by accident oh, and they're oh. talking about it, just going up and down the streets in New Ross looking for a penny for uh, for the May, for the uh, for the Maybush to buy sweets basically yeah. you'd get collect money and uh, this was sailing got in everywhere didn't it this yeah, was absolutely. sailing it's yeah, yeah. absolutely brilliant yeah, yeah. Yeah. this idea of people yeah. going looking for money that's, yeah, that was always yeah. part of the deal that was a part of Halloween that was part of Christmas that was a part of the Easter going for eggs yeah. that's part of the deal yeah. that's yeah. right so what I know yeah stick it on okay right so yeah, and it used to be midnight mass, the first day of May, was called May Day. Yeah. And 
Mum used to do a bush. With little colour, different colour rags of it. Ribbons and ribbons. And ribbons and York, York, so that was called a bear bush. Mm. But I remember there used to be a midnight mass that time. In the Balloch. And they'd be outside at the chapel selling little medals and little scafflers and all these things. But it was only on the 1st of May, the 1st day of May, that they come. The people were selling the logs. And I remember Father Stephens at the Balloch. We met our community in the Balloch. But we'd walk about, say, two miles. We'd be dirty for to get that, that mass that night. We wouldn't go home maybe till half time, one o'clock. But that happened that May day because all we almost out with the Maybush. Yeah. And the whole hand the Maybush up. And they're going around the whole place with the Maybush. What would they do? Tell me. They hold the Maybush up and shout May day, you know, May day, May day, May day. Yeah. And some people give you money. And some people give you bread and jam, was it? Like it was great thing you get bread and jam. Yeah. Years ago, you were. You're a well to person if you're bed and jam. What was your first? Well, in our street, we got someone, some of the fathers, to cut it out, the elder brothers, to cut us down a gorse, a bit of gorse, to make make a bush, and we dressed it up with to tie, just tie little bunches of primroses and put them on it, and then we collect bits of paper, runs, especially especially silver paper of sweets, and put that on it. Whatever, whatever, to, we didn't have money to buy to buy things so we never dawned on us that you could buy stuff to put on it. You just use whatever whatever bits and pieces you had. As colourful bits and pieces you had. And you had a bit of a procession, didn't you? We, yeah, we used to go up and down the street then shouting penny on the Maybush and the neighbours would give us a penny and the better part of all was. My grandfather had a little shop in the corner and I'd go in with my penny <laughs> ask him for a half of the sweets and a half of chain. <laughs> And he'd tell me, he'd never take the penny, he'd tell me, give me, he'd give me the better of the sweets and tell me, keep the penny for Sunday. <laughs> so there we have it, Midnight Mass in the Ballock, which is only a couple of miles from us here, back in the 19, 1960s. One thing the women from New Ross said, Robbie, was they said, you'd use whatever you had. And yeah. that, to me, is, sums it up. Like, n I love whatever. You can get your egg shells. These are some yeah. stuff that I would have saved off the Maybush up in Ballandagan last year. Some of the children would have made them. So you got little things, little old shirts and... You, you, you can't see these, Robbie, but they're mm -hmm. little old broken eggshells, whatever. You can even have a feel of them there, or whatever, but just oh, that right. they're little old eggshells strung together with a piece of cloth, mm -hmm. and they're lovely. But one thing as well is, what I love is, I've seen one down in Adamstown, where you would uh, feel that joke, so you can figure out what that is. The little kinder egg things. The little kinder egg. Sure that's yeah. So I said, there, there, there are no rules. You can just fry eggs, yeah? Right? Yeah, that's great. Um, and there's one one of my favourite things. I remember working in Offaly a couple of years ago and the children in Offaly. You had recycling. Yeah, exactly. And they put the, the Easter egg stuff on it. There was a woman, Elsie Donnelly, down in Timon. I don't think she's doing it this year, but her family are. And she had a gorgeous bush. I'll, sh a bush, I'll show it to you now. And had bits of the Easter egg, the Easter egg um, tin foil and the old Easter egg cardboard boxes left on it. So there were no real fixed rules or whatever. You know, you can do... You know, you get, you can get, get them up, whichever way they are. There was a Slovakian woman I met in New Ross there the, the other day, and she came in to figure out what we were doing with the Maybush here, because she was just looking and saying, should we do that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and she was looking, she was telling me the tree that they use. So, to think that we are, that we're, it's actually part of a bigger, wider, this whole Maybush thing, you get the Maypole over in England, you get the Maypole, you get it in Sweden, you get the, you get they, were, they were more sensual though, weren't they? Yeah. The Slovakian one, they were more, it's more sensuous. It was, it was more well, a raunchy. More, oh, a little bit more than ours now, yeah, yeah. Maybe the good came out of ours, or maybe we didn't have the good in the first place. Well, but we yeah. probably did, I'd say the church again, <laughs> we got rid but there was, when you're talking about the Maypole, yeah. now that Maypole, again, we have that all the way from, we got it from England, and the Maypole was here in Watford from the 14th century, there's accounts, but again, the Normans were here then. Yeah. But uh, they have it even in the Kerry Gwale talk, and they had a little song where it goes, uh, uh, Jackson Markle, Jackie Blue Bell, Jackson Markle, Jackie Blue Bell, Jackson Markle, Jackie Blue Bell, all day long. And it's uh, so it's like uh, I think that's from Kirk So you had this Irish so they, 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 song, they, they, an English song. Yeah, well, it, it's half Irish, half macaronic. Yeah, yeah, they'd yeah. sing that as they're going round with the the idea is you go around with your with your ribbons around yeah. the around the maypole yeah. and until they all gather up and then you go around the opposite direction. That's what they'd be singing when they're when they're weaving in and out. Yeah. And the whole thing, you know. So. And th those maypoles, you come across them up in County Down, you come across them in Dublin, you come across them in Wexford, you carry uh -huh. They were, um, they were there, they were part of the tradition as well. Are there any left, could anyone, are there any maypoles left in the country at all? Well, we're putting the message out. If anybody can send up any, 
especially on the live uh, podcast here, yeah. if you can put, any, uh, put up any pictures of uh, yeah. Maypole's uh, current day ones, it'd be absolutely amazing. It'd be amazing to hear it. Was that, was that connected to the moment, moment tradition at all in May? Or was there a connection between May Day and Moment? I don't know. Or Maypole, I no. I don't know. I don't know. The song thing is interesting, isn't it? The song, would you, but then again, children would, children, it's natural that children would like to sing. I, just the looked, I don't know who Jackie Bluebell was, but it sounds absolutely lovely. Yeah. yeah. That was the thing as well, which is important as well, with the May bush and with the kind of the scattering, which you get in the May Ode, it was a gorgeous thing that uh, Claude Dylan sh- showed me before up in, the, up in the Museum of Country Life in Mayo, is that uh, the, you would get uh, flowers left on the thresholds, like little bluebells. And that's the same in the, in the May bush tradition down here. The, little girl, the children, girls mostly, would be sent out. So you'd be collecting the cowslips, the primroses, the wallflowers, whatever seasonal or local flowers you could get. Um, and you'd put them on either on the May bush or you'd put them into the, um, into the, onto the, the thresholds of the door. There's a woman in Donegal, and going back to this Donegal piece, remember mm-hmm. we're supposed to go to play it oh, ages yeah, ago. We'll get there eventually. But it was, yeah, we'll get there. But there was a woman in Donegal telling me that um, she remembers whatever, that the, the adults would leave the flowers out and they deliberately let the children see them putting the flowers out yeah. and then they'd hide them to take the flowers away and the children believed then that the fairies came back and took them. So I'll stick it on for you, will I? Wow. Go on, I'll stick it on. May flowers are like a big buttercup and you would collect them and you would leave them on people's windowsills and uh, it was supposed to bring luck. I think it was it came from an old pagan custom actually but it was uh, this was the thing anyway that you put them on the window and uh, the good thing about it was if children could see you putting them on the window and then if you removed them yourself the next morning the children really believed that the fairies had taken them because they were pleased with you. Like, you know how some people, they leave off their vest in May or, or June, you know, for the summer because you're wearing a heavy clothes during the winter. Mm-hmm. But uh, they used to tell us not to cast anything off until May is finished. So they would say, don't cast a clue till May goes out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You have to keep your petticoat on, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, then they used to, they used to go out on, on the May, May Eve like the, the, the last day of April, before sunset they would go out and they would gather the yarrow, that's a weed, and you would pluck the weed, this yarrow, and you would bring it with you and you split it under your pillow. And you would say this rhyme, you would say, yarrow, good morrow, good morrow, fair yarrow, and thrice, good morrow to thee. And by this time tomorrow, you will tell me who my true love will be. That was Donegal, Robbie, and there's a, the whole kind of a tradition of divination is there as well. There surely it? was. Actually, in May, uh, the divination, uh, a lot of it uh, revolved around the slug or the snail. Yeah. And now, it wasn't just a shellicky, 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 pooky, yeah. uh, stick out your horns. But sometimes they'd put uh, slugs or snails on, uh, on a piece of slate around May Day. Yeah. And uh, whatever uh, letter or close to letter they were going to spell would have been, now this was uh, girls doing this. Normally the divination was done by girls trying to find out who their future husbands were going to be. It was never... All about control around. again probably, wasn't it? Well, I don't know yeah, what yeah. that was. Yeah, but yeah. again, it's, it's, it's the, the... You see, folklore is generally held on to by the most marginalised yeah. in the community and women uh, and girls, generally speaking, were the most marginalised, I suppose. Yeah. So, um, But the, the, the idea was that whatever letter was spelt then, that would give you an idea of who you were going to marry because they would have that, them initials or that letter. Yeah. Uh, as the beginning of the I have a recording of a woman if I, if I if I find it I might show it to you if not you, you have to hear me telling about it but you go to the May Jew and you'll uh, in, the, in, the, in the reflection of the May Jew you'll see the man you're going to marry well you, you wash, wash your face in the May Jew and you see the, the face of the person you're going to marry well all going well but there, there's also that the word for one word for a slug is a druch team. Uh, which means uh, a little thing of the Jew. And uh, with a druchtin, it was also used as a play word for a penis. So the, the, the slug, I suppose, being sort of whatever, a phallic or whatever, I don't know, I'm not going to go too far yeah. much into it. But, but basically, you know, it was all, all the symbolism was, well, it was sort of there, and it's very gentle as well. It, was, it, was, uh, it wasn't like Slovakia. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you want to know about Slovakia? <laughs> we got Slovakian folk, folk <laughs> made, made, it, made, made, made it customs. <laughs> Listen, come here to me. Forget about Mickey's and snails there for a second, right? Uh, let's talk about cuckoos instead. Actually, well, cuckoos, yes, cuckoos got its own connotations as well now, to be fair. Because we, 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 actually, there's a great story that my mother had was said that... Um, if you didn't hear the cuckoo by the end of May, you were going to die. And now yeah. I heard the cuckoo there. Actually, this word in April now. Actually, just uh, I just heard the cuckoo. But last weekend down in Corriglow, so I'm I'm grand. You haven't heard it yet. Your fault. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have heard one in the last forty years. No, 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 I don't know how you're hanging in here. <laughs> so the Woodquest is the one I'd be hearing. Now yeah, yeah, yeah. The wood, uh, the, it's the Woodcock they call it elsewhere. Yeah. Woodquest we call it. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, just we call it Wexford. Yeah. yeah. But come here to me. Um, we have a bit of a list, and we're going to try to get through it. There was a. There was another kind of thing that Donny Galway were saying was this kind of thing of never cast a clout till May is out. That was a kind of a thing. Ah, wow. I, I, what does that mean though? Yeah, I, I've heard different versions of it, but it was like the, the May, you'd always assume May being out, I May, the month was out, but some people said actually it's the May, tr- the May tree or the May flowers to Whitehorn until the flowers are out. Ah. Then you'll cast a, cast a clout till May is out, yeah. Well, what does casting a clout mean? Taking off the clothes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's oh, yeah. What yeah. Clout yeah. yeah because for, after coming through the hard way after the winter. That so is you, amazing. So, yeah. clout, that, a clout, which means a belt as yeah. well, like it gives somebody a clout. Oh, yeah. And that's like a hit of a clout. But there's a word in Irish, paltog, which is a palt is a rag. Yeah. And also a paltog is to hit, is a hit. Okay. Or a rap. Right. So it's amazing. Why yeah. why do cloth and rap? Cloth and cloth, yeah. yeah. Especially when you hear the Donny Gall action. Clout to me is out. You hear you hear, yeah, the, hear yeah. the women there. Oh, we have clouts here. I'll give you a clout. Yeah, give you a clout or something. Yeah, Jeez, yeah. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. 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 One yeah. other thing actually, whatever, was that we had a, again. Granny at home had it was that you'd always get a feed of nettles in the month of May. Now I over the years I've been. Well, before you get on that, I just want to. There's yeah. one you reminded me of another May yeah. saying. What? And that was uh, let's see. Oh, okay, I can just remember now. Oh, yeah, a swarm a swarm in May is worth a guinea a day. A swarm in June is worth a golden spoon and a swarm in July is worth a butterfly. That's a, a swarm of bees. Wow. So, uh, so the July is no good. Yeah. You'd be hoping to be swarming soon anyway, but June is the one that's best. Wow. Yeah. Actually, Granny had a little rhyme. Um, Wash him in water that never rained nor sprung and dry him in a towel that was never wove nor spun. And wow. She'd always ask you a little riddle, whatever. Yeah, wash him in water that never rained nor sprung and dry him in a towel. And uh, I'll stick it on for you. Actually, it was. Uh, I'm going to stick it a clip on for you. I'm going to stick that clip on for you. We'll, you're all in suspense now. Yeah, all in suspense. <laughs> Just talking about what it is. So I'll stick it on. You wash your hands with water. It never was rain or sprung. And you dry them in a towel that never was woven or spun. Died. Mm. They died now. Wash yeah. your hands in water that never rain or sprung. Yeah, That's the joke. Yeah. yeah. And you dry him in a towel that never was woven or spun. That was the, the sun. Dry the hands. So that was the answer to that little riddle for you. Uh, wash, walk in the you and let the sun dry them. And there's, no, there's a version of that in Irish up on Dogan.ie uh, uh, recorded. So the Royal, Royal Irish Academy have it in their archives. Recorded in 1929. I think the version is from Watford or South Tipperary. Yeah. Uh, one or the other and uh, probably from Watford yeah. so it's it's uh, it goes much it's it probably definitely all over the south anyway isn't yeah. I'm sure it's further afield yeah. one thing you get all over the country is uh, the feed of nettles and I mentioned that earlier on was you get a, one feed of nettles in the month of May because the nettles are at their, at their best or the youngest but in some places you get a tree just, board, just back to the tree again whatever mm-hmm. uh, feed, feed of nettles um, because they said they were good for you, good for the blood, whatever. Um, it was away. Yeah, um, and also we, we there was a great great woman called Marie Fanouk, a Kerry woman. She's a lecturer in art. She's an artist. She's a filmmaker. She's, she's loads of things. Um, but she did a whole talk on. Um, remember in last year in the National Library oh, on, yeah. on on, on uh, making nettle soup, oh, but made little yeah. tinctures as well, whatever. Nyan tog, in Irish. Nyan tog a hoi me kupogel yishme. That's a nettle that stung me and a kupogel cure me. Kupog is a dock leaf. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they have uh, that was the Eki Peaky, one of the uh, Scaly Nabeli, you know, Rowley Rowley, one of them. Right. But the one it, it's an old, old children's thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, the nettle soup. Uh, I, I I I tried it that day and and it was lovely. Yeah. But uh, it's lovely. That's the way, keeping you alive. That's the. Fuck but you know the way it. that's that's counteracting my not hearing the cuckoo. But yeah, yeah. but it, it's like interesting. We forgot to hear for the for the uh, April one, like heron season, like. Uh, the herrings people call them yeah. her- herring them yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the herring season would be April to September yeah. and then you got the nettle season maybe for making soup it'd be May but it'd be interesting someday we got to do maybe one on, on food seasons and what, what comes up in yeah. the mythology and the, and the what do you mean the 
herons, the herons, the herons are home. The boys only fish the herons. So I suppose October, November, early December, maybe that's when they stop. They're oh in, yeah, no, but yeah, but with the the herons are, are the freshest. Well, I don't know what they used to do uh, years ago. They yeah. they would be fishing for heron around uh, Martin's uh, up to Martin's yeah, Eve. Yeah, right? fishing yeah. at home. They always are staying at home. Yeah. No one will be interested in eating herons after eating turkey at Christmas. So just stop fishing ah, before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, come here to me. Um, the sun is coming out a little bit again. I'm looking over the gap there, whatever. Um, we're well, we don't know, we? No, uh, I want to say, just <laughs> oh, by we're nearly there, right? I do want to say, okay, the, the servants, uh, we, we forgot to oh, say that. Jesus, yeah. Sorry. On the 1st of May, yeah. we had, uh, there, was, there was, that was the time when people would change their service. And so, you'd be, these were the people who were uh, beyond the age of doing the May Queen, and they've done all that stuff, and now they're in normal employment. And years ago, 1st of May was the day that they used to change employment. They'd all gather together in the fair in the local town, and the... Uh, the local landlords would come around and choose the next ones for the day. But another one that was, it was Gale Day. Gale yeah. Day was a uh, rent day. All yeah. the rent was paid. Yeah. Now, it wasn't to do with wind. Gale is the Irish word for yield. Yeah. So they were basically yielding up, and uh, so it was paying. They had no rights because the land had been taken from them generations before. Absolutely. So this was the tribute they had to pay. Down near you, actually, there's a, there's a great Gale. There's a flagstaff. There's a man called Liam Ryan from down in Feddert. He showed it to me on the big feckin' estate. I don't know whose the estate was. And it's a flagstaff. Now only part of it's left. And when Gale Day would come, this yoke would turn up. So the locals would see this then and know then that, that your man was looking for his bobs. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. well, sure. It's... Uh, well, we should know about landlordism in this country during the famine and during the 19th century, but it looks like the days are back. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, uh, but there is one thing I'd like to sort of lay things from my end on it anyway. Mm-hmm. There's a, a lovely, to do with May, there's a nice little, uh, this is from the Irish of North Kilkenny, which is now deceased, dead, defunct. And they had one that went, uh, uh, And that means the harsh winter is in the mouth of yellow May. So, uh, Bealtaine Bui is yellow May, but also uh, sunny, beautiful May. Gorgeous. So, uh, it means that, now that was to do with, uh, apparently when my father uh, says, I don't know if it's still, but you'd always get two weeks of an easterly wind coming in from the Irish Sea in May, and uh, it would be bitter, it'd get cold. But sure, it happens so often, I think every month has a similar yeah. <laughs> tradition. Yeah. But that, that was the lovely, the Bealtaine Bui, again, May being very associated with the colour yellow. Gorgeous. So, so that's Narkel Kenny. On that note, and I'm looking out here, and the gorse has come out, or the winds have come out, and it's lovely and bright and yellow out there, and the sun is coming out, and uh, the summer is here, hopefully. So we'll uh, end uh, to Lent today with Padre Gina Coolaghan singing... Uh, that's exactly what she's going to sing <laughs> from a concert from a bird song concert from 2015 so listen thanks a million we're going to do one more podcast or chat before the summer we're going to do it it's coming up to 1798 time here in, in, in Wexford we're 220 years and because of all the folklore and all the songs and all the stories that still are part of the memory of the people here in Wexford and in other counties as well in Mead and other counties as well in, down in, in Antrim and down in Antrim exactly in parts of Limerick as well Longford um, yep yeah, absolutely Mayo. and Mayo yeah. yeah. so the, the, the spread is there so listen we're going to do a special on that in, on, the, on the 1st of June so listen we'll leave you off and go off and enjoy yeah, so we'll leave you. enjoy your evening okay Sauru Sauru Ich
is clog is Ta miller no kushogis kulum a beku hog marin and saurunin. Sauru sauru ban in a nauna hog marin and saurunin. Sauru we all in a Oh, come on. 